what is your current view on where the Fed is with inflation? Um, how is Fed policy uh, in relation to how they're doing with inflation? Uh, and how does that stack up? Or how would you uh, view the opportunity in the context of what looks to be a consensus pricing of about, let's call it one and a half to two cuts by the end of this year? At this point, I mean, the Fed is basically dealing with inflation that's still a little bit elevated relative to their mandate and a modestly slowing economy that is not, you know, that is still secularly tight from, you know, if you, if you zoom out on any, with any perspective, um, you know, a, a 4% unemployment rate is still very low. And so the balance of those things are, um, are leading a pol leading to a policy behavior where they're not doing much, right? And I think it's easy to like get hung up on all the rhetoric and the speakers and press conferences and all that stuff, and just forget like it's been six months this year and they have done nothing. They did nothing in the second half of last year, like nothing. The answer is nothing. What has the Fed done? Nothing. And part of the reason why that is is because that is a, a reasonable policy. For them to do nothing in the context of that balance of pressure is pretty good, you know, overall an economy that's pretty good with inflation that's a little too high. And so the thing that's going to force them to change that stance is something's going to either have to happen meaningfully with inflation, meaning it's going to have to go up a lot, which is, you know, I don't think there's anything... And nothing I see that is other than an absent, like a meaningful oil price shock or something like that. I don't really mm -hmm. see anything pressuring it that way. Or the economy ha has to slow down meaningfully. And I also don't see anything acute in that term. You know, I think we're going to see continued gradual moderation, but nothing that is, you know, the economy falling off the cliff. And so you put that together and it kind of gives the picture that um, the Fed's going to do nothing. Right, that that's basically where their stance is, is in a do nothing policy stance for extended period. And like finally, markets, you know, we came into this year, just talk about expectations. Markets were pricing in seven cuts, seven cuts in an economy with an under 4% unemployment rate and inflation that was, you know, 100 or 200 basis points above the Fed's mandate. Like that was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy pricing. Now pricing's one cut. Like, I don't know. Are they going to cut once? Are they going to cut zero? Are they going to cut two? Like, it, you know, in, in the game of trading markets, you don't want to, like, get too hung up on – you don't want to play a game with one cut or two cuts or this or that because you, you have no idea at that level. No one has any idea at that level. So – when you say the economy, I agree with you, by the way, on inflation in the sense that it's clearly above target. Uh, there's nothing in my view that would indicate that inflation is going to meaningfully accelerate. Most of the residual inflation pressure, if you look at the subcomponents, is from, of course, uh, rent, OER, shelter, uh, and motor vehicle uh, insurance. Those two components, I believe, are responsible for about 65% of, of total inflation. Um Motor vehicle insurance will, will, of course, you know, just based on comps, roll down. Shelter, of course, is anyone's guess how slowly that, that normalizes. Um, however, the Fed historically has never really cut based on inflation. They almost always cut based on employment because in the sequence of business cycles, inflation generally lags employment, right? Inflation would be characterized as more of a lagging economic indicator, employment more coincident. Um, unemployment rate, as you mentioned, is 4%. However, um, on the margin, it's gone from 3 4 to 4 right? So the trajectory is upwards. How do you square, um, you know, it's a low unemployment rate, quote unquote, low based on history versus it's a rising unemployment rate? And uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the the phrase uh, "slowly then all at once," right? So, what do you what do you um, you know? How do you sort of get a, a leading edge on the risk that employment uh, moves to 4.2 over the next three or four months, let's say, and then all of a sudden we're dealing with a hundred basis point increase off the lows, which in a historical context would trigger things like maybe the SOM rule and be more consistent with every recession we've had in the past. So how do you square its low 
as a general comment versus it's a rising unemployment rate? Well, I think it really comes down to what is causing the rise. And if you see, um, and I think this, this uh, period is at least somewhat interesting that part of that rise is supply oriented. Um, and so, for instance, if you see, where do you see loosening? You see uh, more loosening in high school or less education, more loosening in, um, in lower income or younger cohorts. And so you look at that and you sort of say to yourself, you know, and, and that's at a time, so that's happened at a time when we've had a pickup in immigration, uh, you know, pretty meaningful pickup in immigration um, and flow. And uh, where labor force participation, uh, you know, for prime age workers is basically at, you know, multi-decade highs. I sort of look at that picture and I say to myself, you know, if you're sitting in the Fed shoes, that's kind of a desirable uh, loosening, modest loosening of the labor market and one where you're not necessarily seeing the types of dynamics that would become reinforcing, right? Just because more, um, you know, more prime-aged uh, women are coming into the workforce, and that's drawing the unemployment rate down, or just because immigration is increasing, and that that's creating a loosening of the of the labor markets. I'm not sure if you're sitting in the Fed shoes, you say that that's a real problem. The problem comes when you get uh, a real you know, you get a real slowing in hiring where you, and then on top of it, where you get a big pickup in firings, right? Firings mm -hmm. are at, you know, are very low. You know, basically they're as low as the Jolt series has been since it started in 2002 um, in, as a percentage of the population or, or the labor force. Um, you know, hirings have slowed, but they're, you know, they're still fine you know, in the scheme of things and coming off of incredibly high hiring that happened a couple of years ago and participation is very high. Like that, that's kind of, that's kind of an optimal slowing of loosening. It's probably an optimal loosening of the labor market rather than indicative of a more concerning self-reinforcing dynamic. 